realize that sometimes in life, a lot of times in life, the picture that I have is not the picture that God has. It's not the picture that other people have. It's the, the main focus here is think outside of your box. You know, it's, it's whose life is it? Is it my life? Is it, is it your, is my life your life? Or is my life God's life? You know, Paul says, um, the life that I live is not mine. It's not my own. It's, it's Christ. So, um, I'm just going to share a little bit here um, about, again, this picture. Uh, it's not the picture that we, it, what, what am I looking at? So, I got back about a month ago now, and I was sitting in my parents' house. I went to visit my family, and I was sitting at the kitchen table. I had been drinking a bunch of coffee all day, and then, but I just had this like, oh my gosh, I just, I feel like I'm going to do something. I, I feel hungry. I want to do something, God. What am I supposed to be doing? And then I started thinking about, well, my parents are asking me to move here. My uncle says my dad needs me here. Um, people are asking me to go here and go there and come back to St. Petersburg and, and come to Wyoming and come help us in the ministry because I have a friend that's doing a, like a, working in the reservation in Wyoming. And she's like, come and help us here. We would love to have you. And so I'm sitting at the kitchen table and I'm just thinking, man, God, what, uh, what am I supposed to be doing? I, I, I know that I, I feel like you're talking to me. But I don't know, maybe it's just this coffee that I'm drinking. Maybe I just had too much coffee and, and I just have too much energy now. And so I'm just sitting there and I started, I just got a piece of paper out and I started writing. And I just said, I just feel like in St. Petersburg, it was, it was simple. Things were simple. I knew what I was there for. I was just putting my hand to work. I was just helping in different things. I was ministering in different areas. And I just felt like, that was so simple. It was so good. I loved it. And I come back, and I'm just feeling like everybody is pulling me to go somewhere. And I'm like, God, everybody has a picture of what I'm supposed to be doing. I think I have a picture of what I'm supposed to be doing, but what am I supposed to be doing? I don't want, what is your idea? What is your plan? What does it look like to you, God? Because I felt like I reached the, the point of like, yes, life is wonderful, and I've never experienced anything so great. I was a missionary. I am a missionary, and I'm back home, and I just feel like I'm not doing, I'm, is, this, is this right? What am I doing? And I just felt like God saying, stop worrying about what everybody else wants from you. Stop worrying about the pressure they're putting on you because I love my family and they have good hearts. But sometimes their desires for me is because they just want me around. And I love them. I miss them. But God's desire for me might not be to be where they're at. It might not look like that. So I started, you know, while I was in Russia, I was um, reading through the Old Testament. I love, love, love the Old Testament. I don't know why. Um, I, got, I guess I got this understanding of grace and God's love for me that I got to go back into the Old Testament now and read through and see that God loved us from the very first page of the Bible. And he's always loved us. And no matter how bad somebody messed up, he was always chasing after them. And it was so, it was so good. So I was reading about David and Saul and just really just like, man, I love this. I, I want to keep reading. I, I just kept on reading First and Second Samuel over and over. And so as I was getting ready, I just felt like God kept bringing them back up to me. And I'm like, okay, is this where you, what you want me to teach? And um, there's two things. Um, Saul's the king and David's the king, right? Like the, Saul's the king, and he um, goes against what God told him to do. And then now David becomes anointed as king. And so um, Saul, though, if you look in chapter 15, I'll try to keep this short. I just want to share my heart real quick. Um, um, so chapter 15, um, he's supposed to go and kill the Amicalites, the Saul is. And instead of doing what God told him to do, he said, kill everything. Kill, kill the, the sheep, the goats, all the, the livestock, everything. And instead, 
he tells them, he goes and, and they, they discuss, the people are telling him, let's just keep this stuff, okay? Let's not get rid of it. And so Samuel comes to him and he tells him, you know, um, you didn't do what God told you to do. And Saul's like, yeah, I did. I did what I was supposed to do. I went, destroyed the Amicalites, you know, we're good. Took some sheep and goats and we, we made a sacrifice for God though. And Samuel says, you know, obedience is better than sacrifice. And then Saul finally admits, he says in verse 24, he says, uh, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. So for me, I could have feared my family. I could have just had more respect for my family than I had for God. And I could have gone back, come back to Arizona as soon as I got back and moved here and just started living with my parents. See, God didn't, God never disqualified Saul. Saul disqualified himself. Because sometimes it feels better to do what people are asking you to do and what makes them happy because it's pleasing to them and it's really difficult to go against what people want sometimes. But when I decided to say, no, I'm not going to, because I it was in Arizona and I was just feeling really like, oh, I can't be here. What's wrong with me? Like, ah. And I could have forced myself to stay. And God would have been fine with it. He would have said, okay, then that's, go ahead. I'm not going to force you to go anywhere. I want you to be where, where you want, I, you go where you want to go, but I'm telling you, I have something better for you if you just follow where I'm going. If you let your picture of what your life should be look like my picture, if you see the picture I have for you, your life is going to be so much better. And so Saul made a choice that said, uh, it's easier to go with the people, so I'm just going to go with them. So what he said was, okay, God, your plan is good, but I don't really want it. So he disqualified himself. God didn't change his mind about him. God, God still loved him, but Saul said, God, I don't really love your plan. But then you look... And so then David gets anointed as king and, and Samuel goes over to his house and Samuel has his own idea of who the king should be, right? He's like, ooh, that guy right there, he looks real good. That's the one. You're it, buddy. I see you. And God says, oh, what you doing, Samuel? That's not, that's not him. Okay, okay, then this one. He looks real strong. That's him. No, Samuel, that's not it. You know, well, who then? All these guys look amazing. And then they bring in the little scrawny David. And he's like, oh boy, that's, that's him? Are you sure? God, are you sure? And God's saying, I don't look at the outward appearance. I look at the heart. David was a man after God's own heart. God wasn't saying, I need someone big and bad to be the king because he needs to have a strong arm. He needs to be able to rule. He needed someone that was going to let him paint the picture in their heart of what their life should look like. God isn't asking you to be this big and bad person and to be this amazing person. He's saying, just let me paint the picture of who you are on the inside of your heart so that way you can be that amazing person that I called you to be. That's all he wants. See, I was willing to go to Russia, but I still had a picture of what it should look like on the inside of me. And God is saying, no, Sarah, it's okay for it to look a little bit different. Let me show you. Let me show you what it should look like. And through that, I just got to reach so many people. And you can reach so many people right where you're at if you just 
Allow God to show you who you are through his word. So you don't read the Bible because I have to get my penance. I got to check that off too, along with church. I'm going to just check it off. So I'm going to read a, a chapter and I'm going to read it every day so that way I can be real spiritual. No, it's through the word of God that you see transformation. You read the New Testament, you read, I, I love Ephesians because it shows you who you are in Christ what the benefits are, and then in the last few chapters it shows you, okay, now here's your responsibility, though, okay? And through these scriptures, I started to change. You know, I started to read the Word, and at first I did it because I felt like I had to. I, I have to read or else I'm a sinner. But then I was like, no, I want to read because I want to know who God is. I want to know who I am. I want to get the picture of who I am on the inside of me. And you know that David... He went out, he fought Goliath, and he, you know, he, they, Saul tries to tell him in, in chapter 17, here, put on my armor. You know, people are trying to tell David what to do. Here, put on my armor, do it this way. And, and David puts on that armor, he's looking at it, he's like, man, this is too big. I can't do this. And so many times as Christians, we are so willing to keep that armor on, even though it doesn't fit us. Even though it's not the way that we, this doesn't fit me. But we're so willing to do what pleases people and what people think it should look like. But David said, no, I know who I am. I know what I can do because, you know what? I've been spending time with God out in the sheep pastures. I've been practicing my aim. I'm going to go do it my way, the way that God showed me how to do it. David wasn't scared to go against the grain. He wasn't scared to let the picture of who, who he was shine through what Saul thought. The king told him, here, take my armor. The king. And he's saying, no, it's okay. I'm going to go get myself some five stones. I'm going to pick them out real good, and I'm going to go kill the Philistine. And through that, through allowing that picture of who he was in God's eyes, to come through and who he just standing strong and like, no, I'm going to be who I, this is me. This is who I am. You know, let me read this last scripture in 2 Samuel in chapter 21. I love this because watch what happens because of David choosing to say, I'm going to see who I am in God's eyes. I'm going to let the picture of who I am be painted by God, not my own self, not by other people. I'm going to let it be God's picture on the inside of me. Verse 21, he says, uh, in, so they're going to war and David's old by now. And in uh, chapter 21 and verse... Oh, did I do that Oh, I'm in, I'm, in sec, I'm in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel. There it is. All right, so in verse 20, it says, uh, Yet again there was war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in number, and he, was also, he also was born to the giant. So when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, killed him. And you might be like, well, what's so great about that? Did you hear? It was David's brother's son. It was his nephew. His nephew grew up hearing about what David did, seeing what David did, and knowing that David was a man after God's own heart. And because of it, he said, Jonathan was like, I can do it too. That means that you, in your life, if you're willing to say, I choose the picture that God has for me, I'm going to walk it out, I'm going to live it, and through it, I'm going to change the people that are watching me. I get to change my nephew and niece's lives. I get to change the people's lives that have known me since I was a little kid. You went to where? You've done what? God told Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. He said his name great. Not because he wanted to glorify Abraham, but because he, God wanted to be glorified through Abraham. 
I believe God wants to be glorified through your life. He wants to change people around you. I get to change people's lives around me every day. And it might, you might say, man, you sound real proud of yourself. No, that's not it. I'm happy that I get to glorify God. I'm happy that I got to go somewhere, represent fountains of living water, represent the gospel, the true good to be news, true, too good to be true news to the Russian people. Why? Because I choose to say, God, I'm going to let you paint my picture. I'm going to let your idea be my ideas. I'm going to, your thoughts are higher than my thoughts, but I have your spirit for you to show me those thoughts. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. What does that mean? It means I'm going to put my mind on you, God, and I'm going to follow where you're going. I'm not going to try to figure it out for myself. I'm going to trust the picture that you've painted inside of me.